Tornado Alley is about to unfortunately light up over the next 7 to 10 days. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we're first going to talk about the upcoming severe weather threat over the next couple of days and why this is going to remain so juicy for severe weather over the next week and continued through the end of April. Then we're going to go on the tropical front. There's a lot of chatter on social media about the potential A storm in the Atlantic. There's a system out there. It's swirling. But it's not tropical. We're going to talk about why. And by the end of this video, you are going to know what the difference is between a tropical and a non-tropical system. So stick around for that. We're also going to touch on some Saharan dust working its way into the Caribbean. This has been prolific in Europe over the past couple of weeks. And now it's making its way across the Atlantic Basin. I'll have the chapters in the description as well if you want to bounce around if the tropics is more your thing versus the severe weather. Before we get into it, before we get into this... If you want to stay updated on the severe weather threat and as we venture into hurricane season, hit that subscribe button for me and join this growing weather community. Thank you so much for doing that and meeting. It's been great meeting all of the new subscribers and having the weather conversation. Here we go. April 25th. This is the bigger severe weather day. Although tonight, April 24th, we also have the opportunity around San Angelo, Abilene, and then south of Lubbock for some severe weather tonight. We're going to look at that in the future radar, the high resolution future radar coming up up in just one second. Bigger deal is, at least a more widespread deal, is going to be this enhanced risk out here for us in Dodge City, Kansas, in Elk City, Oklahoma, through Childress, Texas, again, the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, mainly to the west of Oklahoma City and Norman. That is where we're looking at the main severe weather threat of a more widespread severe weather threat tomorrow. In terms of a tornado risk, though, you see the hatching is back. If you watched videos that we've done, if you follow the Storm Prediction Center, when they expect EF2 plus tornadoes, the higher end tornadoes, they what we call a hatch in area. So you see the yellow area representing the higher probabilities. And then we have those lines there representing that this is the area in yellow that we could have those EF2 plus tornadoes, the potential for the strong or long-lived tornadoes, those long track ones that can produce damage, of course, if they hit something. One of the ways that we kind of track the severe weather threat, at least can graphically show you, is using a parameter called STP, significant tornado parameter. There's wind shear involved in this, there's instability, and something that we're going to be watching tonight is going to be areas northwest of Abilene, Texas, towards Lubbock. You see that right here on the scale. Again, if we're getting into purple and white, which we will, unfortunately, tomorrow, that's when we're starting to get onto the higher end, giving us that higher potential. At least we have a better environment. Now, we still need to initiate the cells. We're hoping we don't, and that is the one conditional side of this severe weather threat. Are we going to get those cells to form? If they do, they're in a very favorable environment. I'll show you that in just one second. So there you go, 3 o'clock into the afternoon. We're starting to get those colors to pop up. This is now tomorrow, Thursday, April 25th, and look at the colors in here. In that hatched area that I just showed you, really from the Nebraska-Kansas border through west central Kansas all the way into Oklahoma and then for us into the eastern panhandle of Texas. We are maxing out that storm, uh, storm uh, significant tornado parameter scale. So again, that just means that the environment is very, very capable of producing some bigger tornadoes out of the deal. I want to show you now the high resolution future radar, and this is going to kind of play things out. And you're going to note here as we move forward that there's not a lot going on tonight, although there is a heightened severe weather risk. And you see one lone little guy right there, just south of Lubbock, right around Abilene, northwest of Brady. The deal with, again, tonight is if they initiate, the environment is pretty conducive. There's still the question of how many supercells are we going to get? And the same deal is really as we get into tomorrow as well. Now, tomorrow morning, we could have a few isolated strong storms in eastern Kansas, northern Oklahoma. That's not the main deal. The main deal is going to happen Thursday afternoon. You see it right there. There is 3 or 4 o'clock. But just as we were talking about for tonight, there are questions as if we're if we're going to get this round of severe weather Thursday, April 25th in the afternoon. Now, this rendition of the high resolution future radar does pop a few supercells. And I want to point out what we're kind of looking at here that, again, it's not a foregone conclusion that we pop those cells. But if we do, 
they are going to have the potential to get very, very strong and produce those stronger long track tornadoes. So I want to show you what the high res model is showing. These are all supercells. One right there, one right there, one right there, another one down here. And then they grow and evolve upscale with time. There's a really juicy one here. And then also keep in mind that while this is high resolution, it cannot pinpoint where the supercell or where the tornado is going to be. So there's still limitations, but we can use the model guidance to get a gauge on what the environment can produce. And in that area that the Storm Prediction Center had highlighted, it was roughly right about in here, that's where we're going to have the potential. But again, it's not a foregone conclusion that we get supercells to pop in the afternoon. So that's what when you hear the word conditional. If they pop, then they will be strong, but there's still that question of will we be able to break the cap and will we be able to pop those storms? And hopefully the answer to that is going to be no, but again, the environment is primed. Then it evolves late into the evening. There is 8 o'clock as a damaging straight line wind event uh, that goes through East Texas, East Eastern Oklahoma, Eastern Kansas, into Missouri. One of the reasons why the atmosphere is primed for tornadoes is wind shear. That's the turning of the wind with height. And what we have overlaid here, I think this is a really cool representation. We don't like when it shows up like this, but you can see here, and I want to focus your attention on the two different colors that we have. At the surface, the arrows there are orange. At about 10,000 feet, they are blue. And you see that the blue arrows are coming out of the southwest. So again, that's the mid and upper level wind out of the southwest. But then at the surface, again, remember, let me bring out a different color here. That main tornado threat uh, was right in through here. Look at the crisscross. The orange arrows are coming out of the south, southeast to southeast. And we have that loop with height. If our my if we have any weather nerds out there, the hodograph, they are looping as what we call. When you have the looping hodograph, that means we have pretty good, again, good for the storm, bad for us, but pretty good turning of the winds with height that can induce that rolling motion in the atmosphere. And what I mean by rolling motion, that induces kind of like a tube of rolling motion like this whenever storms get going get the updrafts of the thunderstorms then that tilts the tube from that to like that and then given other things dynamically like rear flank downdraft and all that other stuff that's really really high level meteorology stuff uh we can get that rotating column of air to touch the ground and become a tornado so that's one of the things that we are going to look at over the next couple of days and then we also have another higher end potential getting into the end of the week the weekend and the next week into that four, five, six period. So tis the season for that. All right. It's almost the season for this. I saw a lot on social media over the past couple of days that, okay, this, this is going to be Al Alberto. That's our first name storm of the season developing off the eastern seaboard in the North Atlantic. Okay, well, we have a pretty swirl there. But the problem is this is not tropical. So while there's something there, just because it spins doesn't mean it's tropical. So again, this is something to pay attention to if you follow uh, the weather on social media, that there's a big, big difference and to really understand this. And that's what I want to, to kind of get across today, um, the difference. This is an extra tropical cyclone. So first and foremost, everything that spins in the northern hemisphere, it's counterclockwise. In the southern hemisphere, it's clockwise, is a cyclone. When it's in the tropics, it's a tropical cyclone. Now, for those that don't know, the, the tropical systems, the tropical cyclones get their energy, get their strength from the warmer ocean waters. It is the heat engine. It is what we call a warm cord system. So that is what you see here on this left diagram. Still a counterclockwise circulation. It's tight. But what happens here is we have a warm core system. We actually so strong that we get high pressure to develop on the top of these things. And at the strongest tropical cyclones, we actually see that uh, clockwise motion on top of them. What we have going on out in the North Atlantic now is an extra tropical system. Put simply is they have fronts still attached to them. 
there's transitions that these storms can go through, but to become from going from extra tropical to tropical, those systems have to shed their fronts uh, and have to not get their strength from differences in pressure and temperature in the atmosphere. So we call that a cold core system. And what these things typically do, again, in the atmosphere, at the surface, we have an area of low pressure. They lean back towards the cold air into the northwest with height, and we still have low pressure, again, on top of it. It's that surface low, mid-level low, upper-level low. Where here we have the surface low, mid-level low, and then upper-level high. So there's a distinct difference. Now, to characterize this is, I'm getting a little wordy here, but this is important. And this is something that we are going to talk a lot about at length as we get into the hurricane season. Because I really do want you to know the difference here. And so that you can kind of look out for yourself too. Okay, hey, that has the potential to get a name from the Hurricane Center, which is the entity that is responsible for naming them. So people on social media don't do these. Uh, it's the National Hurricane Center that's going to highlight that. But a tropical cyclone is, uh, again, a, any storm anywhere in the world that's in the tropics that has that meets this criteria it has to have a closed well-defined circulation at the surface a lot of times that spin is in the mid-levels it needs to be at the surface now also at the surface we have to start to see organized deep convection the bubbling around the center that's the thunderstorm activity and it has to be maintained so we have to fire up thunderstorms around the center and then continue to see that happen and then when it gets a name is whenever the sustained winds are greater than 39 miles an hour so those first two things would equate to a tropical depression and then once it gets up to 39 and greater than 39 miles an hour that's whenever we would see the storm get a name so no we do not have alberto in the north atlantic i've seen it on social media so that is why we are talking about it it's i don't want to say just an extra tropical storm they can be just as strong as hurricanes uh but nonetheless it is not tropical in nature. It looks like it on satellite, uh, but meteorologically, scientifically, it is not. I want to end with this. Uh, there's been some crazy video out of Europe over the past couple of weeks about the Saharan dust. And we talked about this in one of the videos being a potential limiting factor in an explosive, quote unquote, hurricane season, which, again, it looks very, very busy. Don't get me wrong. Everything is lining up for a, a busy hurricane season, and I don't want to give anybody a false sense of that it's going to be a quiet year. But one of the limiting factors that we talked about in a previous video, early on anyway, was the Saharan dust. Now, climatologically speaking, that does back off as we get into the peak of hurricane season. It's one of the reasons why it is peak season. The dust backs off. Obviously, we're deeper in the summer, so the water is warmer. Um, but nonetheless, it's a potential limiting factor. Look at the dust that has now kind of shifted from parts of Europe and the Canary Islands and the Azores, now back to uh, the Caribbean. So Puerto Rico, we're likely seeing some hazy skies, if not straight up dusty si uh, skies in Trinidad and Tobago, into Barbados, and into uh, parts of the Leeward and Windward Islands, even maybe getting into the ABC Islands as well, at least the satellite channel picking up on some light amounts of dust. If you're seeing the dust, post that in the comments for me below. But this is kind of our first round of Saharan dust for the islands and for the western side of the Atlantic. This will likely continue to to pinwheel up and out. We already have a little bit of dust in and around Bermuda as well. Uh, but nonetheless, our first round of uh, some Saharan dust. Alrighty, guys. If you're watching from the severe weather strike area, again, it's we're going to be focused on the traditional tornado alley, not only for tonight, not only for tomorrow and the next day, but then really that second wave coming in the day four and day five period as we get ready to close out April. Again, tis the season. We are now getting into severe weather season, so it's always important to have multiple ways to get your watches and warnings, your local news app likely free that is a great tool in addition to the NOAA weather radio if you guys have one of those uh, to get your watches and warnings if you guys found this content helpful uh, please hit that thumbs up button for me like I said earlier in the video as I kind of stumbled across that thank you to all the new subscribers that have joined the channel it's been great meeting everybody it's been great having a weather conversation and that's what we are here for to uh, kind of dispel some of the misinformation that is out there uh, to kind of empower you to 
see what is out there and kind of be able to dissect what is real and what is not. And then to have the conversation. If you're watching this, you're probably a weather nerd like myself. And it's nice to have the conversation. I love it. I hope you guys love it. And I just want to thank you guys again for the support. And uh, I hope you guys hang out with us through severe weather season and, of course, uh, through what, what could be a pretty active, severe, uh, a tropical season, hurricane season. But again, um, if you're just new to the channel, we, of course, hate the hype. That's why we're here. We, again, ramble on. I, if you watch any of the live streams, I say bye and I talk for another hour. So I'm doing it again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time.